it's Natalie and I got another keto recipe for you today. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. I'm going to have a lot more of keto recipes coming, what I eat in a day's meal plans, all of it. I got big plans, just finding the time to do it, okay? So today we are having keto chicken and dumplings. It's winter. We need a hot soup you know, a comfort food on our table. One of my favorites is chicken and dumplings. It's amazing. Now the chicken soup is my recipe. The dumpling recipe will be CJ's Keto, what is it? CJ's Keto Kitchen recipe. I have not tried it before, so I'm gonna try it for you on camera today. But the chicken soup, I made it my own and didn't really use her recipe. She used pre-cooked chicken and all that. I'm doing this in the crock pot, so it's a quick and easy meal for you. You can just put it in the crock pot in the morning, cook the biscuits when it's ready to eat, and you're ready to go. So let's get to it. Mmm. In this crock pot, it's about a six quart crock pot, maybe five, I don't remember. I got some frozen chicken breasts. Okay, there you are, rock hard frozen chicken breasts. All right. Yes, you can do frozen chicken in here. Okay. So, and to the crock pot, I'm going to add the following ingredients. Okay, I have 156 grams of chopped yellow onion. You can use white onion, it'll have a slightly lower carb count, but this is fresh chopped onion. You can also put in a couple tablespoons of dried onion if you want. So I'm gonna just pour that in there. This is for flavor, it's gonna add minimal carbs. Don't be afraid, just eat it in moderation. Onion, I mean. And then I'm out of fresh celery, so I'm gonna go ahead and use my dehydrated celery. This is two tablespoons of dehydrated celery. And when it reconstitutes, it'll equal about a quarter about two ribs of celery chopped up, which is about a quarter cup. You can also use dried uh, celery flakes. Just put two tablespoons of that in there. I'm just doing dehydrated celery, and it's gonna rehydrate in the liquid we add, okay? My husband doesn't like celery, and when I add it to things, I have to chop it up very small, so we're not really gonna see it in here. It's gonna pretty much disintegrate. And then in this spice mixture I got right here, and I'll list these ingredients down below, I have two teaspoons of dried thyme. There is one tablespoon of 21 Salute seasoning I get at Trader Joe's. So it looks like this, okay? And then there is one tablespoon of garlic powder, one tablespoon of dried parsley. You can use fresh if you want. Um, a half a teaspoon of ground sage, and a half a teaspoon of black pepper, and one teaspoon of salt. I'm just gonna pour it right on top of these chicken breasts. It's a lot of seasoning, but it's a lot of chicken. I have three, I don't know if I said it, three very large chicken breasts plus one small one in here. Okay, get all my garlic powder out of there. That's good stuff. And then I'm going to go ahead and add, <laughs> let me get it in camera, one box of organic chicken stock. Be careful on your chicken broths and stock. You can use broth. If you want, you can use bone broth if you want. Just make sure there's no sugar added to it. This doesn't. This is zero carbs. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and add a whole thing of this to here. And then I'm going to judge if I need another one. You know, when the chicken cook, they're gonna put off a lot of water, right? So I don't want this too full. I mean, I think that's pretty good. One whole one. I just couldn't remember how much I used last time. So we're going one whole one in there. This is one tablespoon of Kerrygold, <laughs> Kerrygold butter. You can use what, I, I sliced it up. You don't have to keep it up. It's gonna melt, right? I'm just adding a little more fat in there. We're using chicken breast. Plus it gives the sauce a nice finish. I'm gonna cook this on high 
for two hours, then I'm gonna turn it for low for another four to six hours. It will be six hours if I do four. I just wanna make sure my chicken breasts don't get mushy and overcooked, right? So I'm gonna check it at six hours. If it needs another two hours or another hour, I'll let you know. So we're first starting high for two hours. To bring it up to temp, we're using frozen chicken breasts, remember. Then I'm gonna turn it for low after two hours. Okay, we'll be back when I think it's done. Well, we'll be back in six hours. We'll look at it and see if it needs more. That'll be a better way for you to judge if I show you. So I did add another cup of chicken stock in here because I have dehydrated celery and it's soaking up some of my liquid. If you're using fresh celery, you probably only need to use one quart. This is basically a quart of chicken stock. Okay, one more thing. If you're using fresh chicken breast, put it on low for four hours. Check it out and see if you need more time, okay? I'm using frozen, so cooking times are different than fresh than frozen. I hope I make that clear. So check it at four hours if you're using fresh, like not frozen chicken breast, and then see if it's done. If it's not tender and done, cook it for another hour or two. All right, okay, it's been six hours. I'm gonna take a chicken breast out and see if it's good and ready. I think it's done. So let me get a bigger, that's a bigger one. Let me see, I wanna see if it shreds. So let's see. Improvising here, that'll work. Oh yeah. Look at that, that's done. So that was high for two hours and four for low hours with frozen chicken breast, total of six hours. I'm gonna shred all the chicken up into this bowl. I'm gonna take it out of the broth and I'll show you what we do next. Just in case you need to know how to shred chicken or chunk it up for the soup, I just go in here with a serrated butter knife, a fork, and I just start tearing at it. No, you could take it out, chop it with a knife, but you see that? It's just falling apart. It's very tender. We just want chicken all throughout our soup. I'm just cutting it up. But this knife just kind of mashes it around, the opposite of what you want to do when you eat chicken, right? Looking for really big chunks in here. Nope. Pretty good. All right. Okay, you need to get you some hot pads. We're going to take that, all that broth out of the crock pot and put it in the stock pot here, or the Dutch oven, not the stock pot. Mine looks like this, and it has a lid, but we're not going to use it. So I'm just pouring all that juice into the Dutch oven. As you can see, I don't have a lot of broth left. We're going to now put the shredded chicken in there. Sorry, I have people visiting here with my mom. I just left, it sounds like. I'm not using any thickening agents here. I'm just using a quarter cup of heavy whipping cream. And if it needs more, I'll give it more. I'm just going to clear it out. Pretty good. Now we're going to give that a stir. Mmm, that looks good already. I'm going to turn the heat on medium, and we're going to bring this up to a simmer. And while it's coming up to a simmer, we're going to make our biscuits that are going to go on top. Okay. This is the point you want to test for seasoning, if it has enough salt and pepper to you in there. 
So I'm just giving it a taste. You know, that's perfect. That teaspoon of salt is perfect. That broth had salt. We added salted butter in here. It's perfect. So I'm not going to add any more salt and pepper in here. The seasoning mixture I used was perfect. Don't forget, if you use the 21 salute, there's salt in that too. So we put a tablespoon. It's perfect. Okay, now we're on to CJ's recipe for the biscuits. Okay, in this bowl, I have one and a half cups of almond flour. And to that, we're going to add one tablespoon of garlic powder. Okay. It's almost like a Cheddar Bay biscuit recipe. Okay, we're putting all the dry first. So that was one and a half cups of almond flour, one tablespoon of garlic powder, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. Oh, I'm getting to the end. I'm gonna have to get more baking powder. That means I've been baking. Awesome. I usually have to throw these away because they expire. Okay. And we're going to whisk the dry together. Just try to get, if there's any lumps, whisk them. You could have sifted your flours. I usually do, but we're making a biscuit, so I'm not worried about it. See, I see a clump of garlic powder in there. There we go. I'm just making sure all the garlic's in there. And she didn't call for it, but I think it needs it. I'm putting in... A pinch of salt a good pinch we're gonna cut in the cold butter to the almond flour I'm gonna use a fork she uses her fingers I'll probably do a combo of that fingers and fork and don't break my egg and one egg is gonna go in here after we get this cut in and some heavy cream I'm gonna check my chicken soup real quick. Oh yeah, it's starting to simmer. I'm taking my lid off. I put the lid on just to bring it up quicker. It's looking pretty good. So we're just gonna cut in the butter till it resembles sand, is what her recipe says. So that's what we're gonna do. See, I'm going to combo this. I see why she used her fingers. I get you, CJ. Okay. wonder with this recipe if we could just bake it on its own and make biscuits. Because it sounds good. I'm going to turn down my heat. There goes my knob. On my soup because it's... It's simmering and my chicken's done. I don't want it to overcook. Okay, getting pretty good. Okay, now we're going to make a whale in the center here. Just like you would do if you're making regular biscuits. And we're going to add one egg. And a quarter cup of heavy cream. It says don't over mix, but we're going to take the egg and the cream and mix it into the flour here, the flour mixture. Get it incorporated, but not smooth. Don't over mix it. The oven's coming up to temp soon. Yay. Okay, that's pretty good. And then we're going to add the cheese. We're going to add a half a cup of shredded cheese.
to this. See what I mean by kind of like a cheddar bay? Add some parsley in there. That's what it's probably going to taste like. Keto style. Okay. There we go. It's pretty good. You don't want to over mix it. All right. We're going to take this over to the pot, drop it by spoonfuls, and then bake it. Okay, here I got like a tablespoon serving spoon and a teaspoon serving spoon. We're going to take spoonfuls, I'm going to use a tablespoon, and she says you need to have room in between your dollops, your plops, right, of dough. We're just kind of rounding it with the teaspoon like this, and then I'm going to drop it like that, okay? We want to go kind of fast. We're just making plops. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just a little rounded. Okay. We're going to keep plopping this in and we'll be back. See, it's starting to foam up our stuff. Oh, I did add a qu another quarter cup to, of heavy cream to the broth. So total was half a cup of heavy cream went into here. Um, you can use her recipe if you want, and she thickens hers with the xanthan gum and almond flour. We got biscuits here. I don't think it needs it, and my broth is fine. So that's, we're not doing that, but... There we go. Now we're going to pop this into a 350 degree oven. Um, that pot is extremely heavy, so I couldn't show you it going into the oven. Just trust me, it's in a preheated 350 degree oven for 20 to 30 minutes. We'll check it out 20. I could show you then and see what it looks like and see if we need an additional 10. Okay? I can tell you right now, I'm a little worried. They might have disintegrated in my broth. She thickens her broth that she uses this biscuit re or dumpling recipe in. That might be a good thing to do. We'll find out at the end. Okay, my oven just went off. Let's check this out. I'm going to hold you away. <laughs> Woo! Still got you steamy. Whew. All right. Okay. So there is the dumplings on top. Some disintegrating. I think next time I'm going to bake them first and just have it on the side. But, okay, we're going to go another 10 minutes. I'm going to set it at 5, check it, and then go another 5 if I need to. They're starting to get brown. It's been 5 minutes. They're still not done. Maybe they're not going to get browner. But I'm going for the full 30 minutes. And then I'll show you what it looks like when I bring it out of the oven. This is what it looks like when it's done. Do you see what I mean? It kind of disintegrated here. You see this? I'm going to have grainy stuff on my soup. See that? It's mush. It's mush. Hmm. <laughs> fail. Chicken soup fail. My chicken soup is not a fail. This biscuit topping, the way I did it, is a fail. Ew. I'm going to have to taste it. So hold on. Okay, lesson learned. Make sure you uh, thicken up your broth. I don't like thick chicken and dumplings. Like her spoon could stand up in hers. So, <laughs> I got some of this. Let me get some broth, see if it's edible. I'm a texture person that looks really grainy to me. Man, I'm super bummed. Oh, okay. Yeah. Grainy. Tastes so good though. Hot. Mm. 
Saru. <laughs> ah, fail. Bummer. I think next time I'll just put some shirataki noodles in here and call it chicken noodle soup. And not do a dumpling recipe. I was worried about them disintegrating and they did. They did. Well, go ahead and at CJ's Keto Kitchen, go check her out on YouTube. There's a video out there of her making it. If you want to do it her way, it will probably work. Um, my way did not work. But the chicken soup is a, is a win. It's amazing. The flavor in here is so good. It's grainy. I don't even think I'll serve it to my family. Oh. I'll have them taste it. And my mom's all, I will. <laughs> I'll have them taste it, though. I don't think my husband will eat it. We'll find out. Maybe I can just strain it. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to strain out the almond flour, which will have the chicken in it, too. So, I don't know <laughs> how to save it. So, this is a fail. Thank you for joining me. Don't do it this way. Learn from my mistakes, okay? So, next time, I will just have the soup on its own like I have before. Or, if I want a noodle, I will add, like, shirataki fettuccine noodles. Let me show you. So, pasta zero, fettuccine shirataki noodles. I would rinse and drain these, dry them out in a pan, and add it to here. Um, I'm going to take the biscuits out right now, what's on top here, and hopefully save the soup, because they all want to eat it. So, I'll do that, and I'll be right Okay, this is what it looks like after I've taken most of the biscuits out. It's down in the sauce, the grains. I can't help that. That's how much I took out of there. There is a lot of chicken in that. I'll save that. I don't know what I'll do with it, but I think my mama will eat it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I'm gonna serve this soup up just like that. I mean, the flavor is amazing. Let me get this. And see if it's grainy still. I stirred it. It's edible. Yay. Yeah. It's edible. No, it's really good. <laughs> Mom says, told you so. I was going to throw this out. I was so disappointed. But actually, it's okay now that I stirred down the rest of that biscuit topping that was left. It thickened it. Look at that. And it's good to go show how thick this is now yeah so yum dished up three bowls I probably have three bowls left in here so I'm gonna divide this by six one more thing the verdict is in my husband likes it he's like Mikey likes it you're old school you know that like commercial he loves it so the soup itself is amazing the topping was a fail so I can't really call this whole recipe a fail. <laughs> okay, I'm going to tell you, because of the almond flour biscuit topping, it's no longer soup, it's stoop, right? It's super, super thick now. But it's not grainy. Once I stirred it, it wasn't grainy anymore and have that mealy texture, which I cannot stand. That's why I don't like ricotta cheese or anything like that. So, next time... Bake the biscuits and then have them on the side if you're going to make it the way I did or make CJ's recipe. All right. I will try to link her below. I haven't done that before, but I will try. Fail. Not a total fail. Um, next time, like I said, I'm not doing the biscuit topping in it. I'm going to cook it on the side in a 350 degree oven until they're golden brown. And then I'll serve it on the side. And just like dip it in there and mm, eat it, right? Because those biscuits, that that's good. I know those would have tasted really good baked on their own.
So probably like 10 minutes like that, and then 350 to 15 minutes. Okay, well, we're gonna eat. Go check out CJ's Kitchen, Keto Kitchen, sorry, it's a mouthful, on YouTube for the full recipe the way she did it. This way I did it, had some win, had some fail, but it's edible. <laughs> okay, all right. All right, thank you for joining me today, and we're going to eat. Make you some chicken soup. Don't forget Yummy. Subscribe. Don't for Oh, yes, my mom's reminding me. I always forget to say it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll bring you more wins. Promise. Bye.